Hello, Mr. Mikkel here. Today I would like to discuss with you a very important concept in academic writing, and that's this idea that you see drawing up now of hedging language, or cautious language, or the honesty principle. Now all of those words, those descriptions of this type of language are basically the same thing. It means language that we're going to use in an academic situation to be more cautious and in fact to be honest with the language that we're using. Um, so straight away now you see this sentence drawing up. Online teaching is beneficial for children. Now that is not honest. Online teaching is beneficial for some children, not for all children, but this verb is is a 100% verb and it means for all children. So we want to avoid that kind of language. We want to be cautious. We want to be honest with our language. So these are some things we can do to make our writing more honest. Firstly, we can add some words before the main part of the sentence. So we could say these things. It is possible that. Or a possibility is that. Or perhaps. So those three phrases that we have there are making the sentence less 100%. We're, we're making it more honest, basically, and more cautious. Now please notice with that language, we want to remember that block. So we've got, it is possible that. Don't change the words around. Remember that whole chunk. So a chunk means three or four words together. It is possible that. You need to remember that and don't change that. You can move the word possible, you could change it to probable. It is probable that. But just keep that chunk together. Remember those words together. The next one, a, po a possibility is that. So now we have the word changing to a noun. So we're going to show off sometimes and change our language. Or just the easy one is perhaps. So some other language that we could use at the start to make our sentence more cautious would be these two options. Some people suggest that, or it has been argued that. Now notice the second one here is using the present perfect. So we have has been plus the past participle with the ed. So we could have other verbs that we use there. It has been suggested, for example. Um, it has been discussed that. Any of those options would be okay. The argued one's quite common. So notice again the chunk of language. If we're going to use the present perfect, it must be the past verb. We could change the verb. Or the simple one, the one above. Some people suggest that. So there we go. There's some words we can add at the start of the sentence. Any of those or a variety of those, use them in your writing. It makes your writing more cautious. Now let's look at some other options. In the middle of that sentence, we might want to change and use some modal verbs instead of this is. So we've got a problem here with is. This is too strong. So we might change it to may be, might be, or could be. They are the three common options. Just remember you can also use some other modal verbs. You could use should be, can be, or would be. They are also okay. I've just chosen those three because they're the most common. Maybe, might be, and could be. Now notice that this sentence has the main word there is beneficial. That's an adjective. So we must have this verb be. So we've got a modal plus be plus the adjective. So might be beneficial or could be beneficial. Uh, that's very important to understand. Now another main structure that we use a lot in writing is a, a simpler structure. So let's have a look at that drawing up now. Online teaching may benefit children. So again we, we are using these words but now because the main word is, is a verb, it's benefit, we don't need the be. So we are now in effect um, making it kind of simpler really. We are and we can use the same words again, the same modal verbs. So we could say online teaching may benefit, online teaching might benefit, online teaching could benefit, online teaching should, should's not a really a, a good one to use. But we could use um, can benefit children. So that's a very common structure that we use there. Now I want to focus on a couple of things here as well. Sometimes we're going to use a negative. So we might use it in this way. So online teaching may not benefit or online teaching um, 
would not benefit. And the same if we were going to use the adjective form. So we might say online teaching um, may not be beneficial or online teaching might not be beneficial. So notice if we're making it negative, we put the not in the middle. So let's move on to another way that we can change this language, and that is to use adverbs in the middle of the sentence. And these are two common ones, possibly and probably. There are other adverbs you can use. Um, hopefully is a good one to use sometimes, unfortunately. But the two most common ones are possibly and probably to take to make the meaning more cautious and less 100%. So note very carefully where it comes in. So in the structure that we have here, the white sentence, online teaching is beneficial for children. We're going to put it between the is and beneficial, is possibly beneficial. There are other places we can put this. We can put it before, between the online teaching and the is, or we can put it at the start of the sentence, and there are other places. But the main place I would like you to focus on is in the middle there, between the verb and the adjective. In the other sentence, we're going to put it between the modal verb and the main verb. So online teaching may possibly benefit children, or online teaching may probably benefit children. Again, this is making it very weak, so we need to understand that we, we're going to change the strength of the language, the strength of the sentence by the language that we use and introduce. So that's it. Have a look at that. Think about that carefully. What I suggest my students always to do is go and find examples of it in a written text. Notice how in some of the readings that you're doing, how other writers use this language, and then practice, of course, yourself. So I'm encouraging my students now to, with their video blog, to use this language to talk about themselves in the future. And remember, this language is very good for speculation and prediction in the future, because in the future we can never be 100% sure. So we may use this language, notice then I just used it, we may use, we may use this language in our uh, essays if it's about the future, if it's about speculation or prediction in the future, because we can never be 100% sure. So we must use this cautious language. So thank you, and I hope you found that helpful.